Welcome to part three of our five-part uh, example PPP lesson plan video series. Part two looked at the introduction and the presentation stages of the lesson, and this video will look at the second P, which is the practice. Now that we have given our students some meaningful and contextualized input in the presentation stage, we're ready to move on to the second P, which is the practice stage. Um, for lessons that are over 30 minutes, and most of them are, uh, you're probably going to have multiple practice activities within the practice stage. You can see that this lesson plan actually has four practice activities. Um, and that's really important because the practice stage is where we get the students to start to um, use the language on their own, both for comprehension and uh, maybe to start filling in some blanks and even creating some language. A good practice stage uses multiple activities, but it uses multiple groupings. So, you know, individual work, pair work, groups of three or four. It also uses all of the different skills, ideally. You know, we want some listening, some reading, some writing, some speaking. And we're going to be looking for different, um, just sort of a dynamic group of activities that hit different learning styles and different intelligences. And I think that this is a pretty uh, a good example of that. So if we look at these practice stages, practice one um, is slotted for five minutes and it uses the text that we had on the board in the presentation. So this is called Teachers Three Truths and Two Lies. And this is a great classroom game. You can play two truths and one lie, three truths and two lies, you know, five truths and three lies, any number of work here. And so the teacher tells the class that Remember, we had the uh, sentences on the board that gave five things that, uh, from the teacher's life experience. Well, the teacher will tell the class only three of the sentences on the board are true. That means two of them are false. So in groups of three, students must discuss with their partners the sentences on the board, talk about which two they think are false and why. Give them a couple of minutes to talk about that. You can sense how long it's taking them. But after some whole class discussion, what do you guys think? Which ones do you think are true? Which ones do you think are false? teacher can reveal the answers by changing the sentences on the board, pointing out the use of the negative. So if you notice here, sentences one, two, and four were actually true. I have lived in three countries. I have traveled to 16 countries and I have eaten snake. Sentences three and five were false. I'm gonna make them true. So for sentence three, I'm gonna add, I have not jumped out of a plane yet, but I want to. So this is not part of my life experience. Finally, and same with number five, I have never met Barack Obama. It's not part of my life experience. And so practice one is still using input. It has the students talking to each other, but it has them um, talking about whether or not they think the sentences are true or false. Practice number two is a grammar worksheet. It's pretty straightforward. It's a sentence level practice handout to be completed individually. And um, like any good lesson plan, I've included that material here. You see this is a present perfect worksheet. Um, part one, the directions are to use the simple past or the present perfect to complete the following exercises. And really what we're looking for here is for them to recognize that when we talk about a specific time in the past, for example, here it says in 2012, we'll be looking for the past simple he took. But when we're talking about general life experiences in his life, we're looking for that present perfect so he has visited. And that's the first three examples are that some of them use the past simple, some use the present perfect. And part two starts to move towards uh, production and it looks uh, focuses on the yes or no question. So it says use the verb phrases to form yes or no questions, use the present perfect and ever, and then answer the question about yourself with yes I have or no I haven't and tell the truth. And there's an example here, um, eat snake. So we want them to write have you ever eaten snake? And then if they have, they would write yes I have. If they haven't, they would write no I haven't. So you can see we have be on TV, break a bone, meet someone famous. We're just looking for them to form the yes or no question of this. And you could follow up having them um, ask their partners these questions, yes or no, but in this particular lesson, we're not going to do that, and you'll see why. So that would be practice two, the grammar worksheet. For practice three, this is much longer. We've slotted 12 minutes for practice three, and this is a dictogloss. A dictogloss is my all-time favorite classroom activity because it's very dynamic. dynamic. It's similar to a dictation, but a dictation is where you give sentence level input. In a dictation, you read individual sentences and the students have time to copy those sentences. But in a dictogloss, it's at the paragraph level. So the teacher reads the short passage about their travel experience two times out loud, stressing that it is true. Students listen and take notes if desired. And so this text right here is what I would read out loud. Um, I have prepared that text and that's important because I want to read it exactly the same way every time I read it. The students right now can't see it, they have to listen. So I will read this paragraph two times fairly slowly. 
It contains many examples of the present perfect, both in the um, affirmative and the negative form. After I read it twice, in groups of three, students work together to recreate the passage as close to the original as possible. So the teacher can read the text again if the students are struggling. So now they're in groups of three. They've listened to my paragraph. They have to work together and try to reconstruct it. They're not going to get it perfect, um, but we want them to try to get it as close as possible. And this is great because they've heard my life experience, my travel experience, using the present perfect many times. And their in-group's going to talk about it. They're going to use the present perfect a lot when they negotiate how to recreate this paragraph. And we'll give them a lot of time. Um, and then... Uh, eventually, I'll just show them the correct answer, and we'll talk about um, what they got wrong and you know why this is all true about me and uh, note some of the grammar that's in it. And finally, practice four. We've got five minutes, and this is a pair speaking practice. In pairs, the students tell a partner three places they have traveled to and three places they have not traveled to but want to, and that's going to be modeled after my paragraph. They've just, in the dictagloss in practice three, they've heard me talk about several places I have traveled and then a couple of places I have not traveled, and we're going to ask them to talk about themselves as the final practice. So they, in these four practice activities, they've practiced all skills. They've used the grammar a lot, both to understand input and to start creating their output. Now we're ready for that final P of PPP, the production, which we will talk about in video number four.